Assalamu alaikum, inshallah you're well guys. So last week I spoke about reasons why I left BDO. So this week it felt natural to speak about my experience of working at Ferguson PLC where I was in the internal audit team which was my first role in industry. For those of you who don't know, Ferguson PLC are a FTSE 100 company. There are builders, merchants, they predominantly sell building materials to tradesmen. And back in 2016, when I joined, they owned a number of brands across America, Canada, UK and Europe. In the UK, you may have recognized brands such as Plum Center and Drain Center, which were owned by Ferguson and they were subsequently rebranded under the Wolseley brand. And I use the phrase were owned by Ferguson because since I've left, there's been a lot of change. Ferguson have since sold the Wolseley brand and actually almost all of their revenue now comes from the US. So at Ferguson, I was part of the internal audit team. We were a team of approximately 12. The head of internal audit was responsible for leading the whole department and he was supported by an executive assistant who was responsible for all of the administrative activities of the team. The main internal audit team was based and operated from the UK. We also had a US team, but they were a bit segregated from us because they reported directly into the head of internal audit. And the internal audit function was split into three different streams. So you had branch audit, corporate audit, and financial audit. The branch audit team were, as the name suggests, responsible for auditing branches across Europe. So these guys would have a timetable in place when they're going to hit certain sites. Obviously the sites wouldn't be aware they're about to be audited because they could fix potential issues. And as part of the audit program, the branch auditors will be looking at things like health and safety on site, how stock is being handled and how different tender types such as cash, credit card, personal information is being handled on site. The branch auditors were the only part of the internal audit team who weren't qualified accountants. Instead, there were people who had spent years working at different sites and had built up a lot of experience. If you think about it, when you're auditing things such as physical security to our trailers, you don't need to be a chartered accountant. But actually, it does help if you've had experience of working at sites so you know what to look for. When I was in internal audit, the branch audit team were just left to it. They knew what they had to do. They had a couple of auditors who went out to the sites and performed the audits. They had a manager who monitored progress and took ultimate ownership and they also had their own administrative assistant who booked in all the travel and coordinated the audits. The second team within internal audit was financial, and this is where I sat. So within financial, we were responsible for coordinating the quarterly controls testing across all divisions. Now I mentioned we had a US team, so they looked after US and Canada, whereas I in the UK was looking after UK and Europe. So you guys know that all organizations, even self-employed people who may just work for themselves will have some form of controls in place to mitigate risk. And with larger organizations, they will have formal control matrices in place, which may be a legal requirement, such as Sir Barnes Oxley, AKA SOX. Interesting fact about Ferguson is that before London, they were listed on the New York Stock Exchange and that meant that they had to comply with SOX. And when they delisted from New York and moved over to London, they decided to keep the SOX matrix. They said it was a good control matrix and carry on with quarterly testing. So when I joined, I took over those matrices. I was seen as the go-to expert on the controls framework. So I was responsible for doing any updates to the controls matrices. Maybe a control has changed, coordinating quarterly testing. So I wouldn't do the testing myself. Instead, I'd have testers across each of the divisions who would do that, but I would answer their questions, review their work. So they would identify any exceptions or issues to follow up. And I would then go and follow up on those and issue a formal report. This is where I'd say I noticed the first difference between industry and practice. Whereas in practice, as a senior auditor, I was still responsible for doing some of the testing. But here, I had more of a managerial responsibility. I wasn't involved in the detail, but I was still expected to take ownership. The final area of internal audit was corporate. And this was a team that I was part of. I'd say I'd spent around 30% of my time working on corporate audits, but we also had two permanent auditors who were based in Sweden and they spent all of their time on corporate audits and that ranged from payroll and HR audits to so making sure that our employees are being paid on time, they're being paid correctly, we're making the correct tax payments to the relevant authorities, we're being compliant with any local country requirements to other audits such as system implementation reviews. So when an organization is implementing a new system, internal audit may go ahead and do a review or a formal audit 
to make sure that the key risks have been addressed. So I had a bit of a hybrid role. I spent most of my time on financial audits, but I also got the opportunity to go ahead and do corporate audits, mostly payroll and HR. The biggest benefit of working on corporate audits was the travel. So Alhamdulillah, I did get the opportunity to travel to Denmark, Finland, to different sites across the UK. But one of the negatives I remember was, especially when I was traveling to European countries, was the halal food. I was traveling to cities such as Aarhus in Denmark, Lati in Finland, where there wasn't a big Muslim population. So I do remember the biggest negative was having problems in finding halal food. But nonetheless, it was still a good experience. At that time, I had only traveled for work internationally once before, and that was going to Geneva. So Alhamdulillah, it was good to get more international travel under my belt. And I always recommend that to people. If you do have the opportunity, please do go because you get the chance to work with people from different backgrounds and different cultures. That was the second difference I noted between industry and practice. At BDO, I only went to two client sites, that's it. Whereas at Ferguson PLC, I did get the opportunity to travel more. But one thing I will say guys, with international travel, it does depend on the role. So with intern lauded, naturally it's a role that you will travel a lot in, but equally you could also find roles where there's no travel at all. Just because you move into industry doesn't mean that you're guaranteed travel. There was a lot of autonomy in the role. I remember sharing an office with one other individual from the team. We didn't have a bank of desks because the branch audit guys, they'd be constantly traveling. Similarly with the corporate audit guys, so would they all, they'd be working from Sweden. But one thing that was very clear was that everyone knew what they were responsible for. Like I mentioned, my day to day was predominantly looking after the controls frameworks. And I found this a bit nerve wracking because I was seen as a subject matter expert. So naturally I had to take a lead in meetings. And I found that this was very different from practice because in practice, you've normally discussed all of the audit issues beforehand. So even if you're asked a very difficult question in a meeting, your manager or the partner may be able to take over and answer that. Whereas in industry, if I didn't know the answer, no one did. I also remember getting a lot of exposure to different departments at Ferguson's head office. Now we only had a small head office, around 80 people. And the reason why was because at our head office, we only looked after group functions. You've got to remember guys that we owned different business units and each business unit would have their own mini head office, which would consist of a few hundred employees. And at group level, I got exposure to different areas such as legal, HR, IT, and sustainability, which was great because when I was in practice, although we may have needed information from different departments such as HR, we wouldn't liaise directly with the HR department and build our own relationships. Normally we would go through a central point of contact within finance, whereas in industry, you're ultimately responsible for building your own relationships. And this was clear from the off guys, because when I started at Ferguson, I found that in my diary, there are a lot of meets and greets already booked in with heads of different departments. Part of the reason for those meets and greets would have been to see if there were any red flags, if there were any problems with me, if they were right to recruit me. But the main objective was for me to go and build my own relationships. In practice, I'd say what you may find is that you'll work as part of a team or with someone for a short period of time on an audit or on a project but actually you may not see them again. You may not continue building that relationship because they've gone on or you've moved on to another project. Whereas in industry, as part of this smaller head office, I was seeing these guys on a daily basis. So naturally it was easier to make stronger relationships. The thing I enjoyed most about the role, which I mentioned earlier, was a bit nerve wracking at the same time, was the fact that I had responsibility for my own areas. Now, in terms of job title, I was an internal auditor, which was more among the more junior members of the team However, I found that having responsibility for my own areas really motivated me because I knew that ultimately if I didn't pull my weight, there would be delays and things wouldn't get done. Now, some of you may already know that I left Ferguson PLC after 18 months in the role. And you may be thinking, hold on a minute, your experiences sound largely positive. You got good experience. You had responsibility. You had travel. Why did you leave? The reason why was because around eight to nine months after I joined Ferguson, they announced that they were going to sell the DT group. And this was the business that was in the Nordics. So it was a significant part of the business. I think they sold it in the end for around 1 billion euros. So it was a lot of money involved. And that meant that the internal audit team's workload in Europe 
would be reduced massively. This not only impacted internal audits workload, but it also reduced the workload of other group office functions. So Ferguson PLC offered voluntary redundancy. Alhamdulillah, I was also offered a promotion. So I had the option of either taking redundancy or being promoted to senior internal auditor in the new structure. Now I went ahead and decided to take the redundancy, but it wasn't purely because of the financial incentive. Remember guys, I mentioned that the workload was being reduced massively. So for someone who was just around a year and a half after qualification at the time, I still had a lot to learn. So there wasn't much benefit in me sitting in a team where I wasn't gonna be learning as much. And also the team was being shrunk as well. So we went from a team of 12 to a team of around three. Most people planned on taking the redundancy. That was quite clear from the off. So it was easier to discuss this with senior managers and with my managers in internal audit who were more experienced, they had also been through other redundancy process. Their advice was, Fez, you're young in your career, take the money, run, go build your career somewhere else. So although I enjoyed my time at Ferguson PLC, looking back at things, it was the right decision to move on. But inshallah, I'll leave it there, guys. As always, any questions or queries, please feel free to comment below or message me on Instagram.